Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my bits and more. Link in the description below. Hi, welcome back, YouTubers and Madden fans. This is Mad Money Shot. I bring something a little bit different today. I basically wanted to show you guys uh, what the coaching adjustments uh, do. I had a lot of people ask me what coaching adjustments work, what coaching adjustments do on the offensive and defensive side. So I'm gonna make a quick video, uh, basically explaining that. Now, one of the first things that they have at the top here is the auto flip. To me, I have that off always. Um, I diagnose and diagram my defenses to a point where uh, if the if the auto flip is on, and if you use my defenses, you should do the same thing. But if the auto flip is on, it essentially uh, counteracts all the adjustments that I make and makes its own. So I really feel like I'm fighting the auto flip. So if I were you, I would take that off. Uh, but you have the option in game um, to switch it on and off. So if you're not comfortable with it, if you're used to using the auto flip, uh, you have an option. I do it from the main menu. I take it out completely. But you can take it on and off right here. So that's the top one. Um, and that's probably one of the most important ones. Uh, the next one here, you got play the ball in the air. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, <laughs> ball in the air defense. You can play the ball to be swatted. It says AI will attempt to swat uh, in two man catch situations, which basically if it's one-on-one, -on -one, uh, they'll go for the swat rather than the pick. I'm not a fan of that. I'd rather go for the pick, especially the way the game's playing right now. You're going to get a lot of interceptions. That's really how the defensive zones are playing right now. So then you have balance. It says AI players will play the ball based on their ball trait. So if you have an aggressive, um, you know, I don't remember how they term the traits, but if you have a uh, 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 uh trait where they play the ball well then you'll basically play the ball well but you probably won't know that I couldn't even tell you what my defenders are so I typically want to have it to play ball that's AI will play the ball at, at all times but this is a good way for people that aren't good at user catching or playing defense deep um, it's a good way for you to essentially get beat if you're not good at it so this is something you really have to be comfortable doing and if you watch my, my gameplay videos you see that I'm very comfortable playing the ball in the air so this really works for me but if you want your defender to be in a position to swat the ball more often because you're more comfortable using the swat ball button uh, which I'm not really a fan of uh, this is how you probably want to set it now you also have an option to play receiver which basically means that they'll you know try to go up and knock the ball out of the receivers hands I just don't find I uh, knock my mic around I don't find that this works really good this year playing the receiver it's not the same as last year where uh, a lot of contact would jumble the ball out um, like it has it, like I said in last year's Madden where it was kind of a they had, uh, the computer Peter would read an accumulation of contact and knock the ball out. It's not really happening that way this year, so I really find that this is not the way to go. Um, so to me, swap ball or playing ball is probably the way to go. Although I play most of my game on balanced, uh, just because um, you know you don't really. Uh, I don't typically go through these adjustments until I know what's coming. Like say I'm in a situation where I know it's going to be a pass or something like that. Anyway, so a large portion of my game I play with this on balance. Now as far as cornerback matchups, this is really simple. You can set it to overall, you can set it to speed, or you can set it to height. So or route running, which is probably not the way to go. This would say basically if you're running a lot of man coverage, this is a possible option. Uh, where you would want to uh, have your best man cover corner covering their best route runner because route runner, route running is really the only thing that beats man. Route running does not beat zone. A lot of people don't know that. So then you have my depth chart, which is just your typical uh, look. Um, you know, you're just going to match up. You know, number one corner, number one receiver, whatever. Uh, but a lot of times, this is kind of balanced for me too. Um, this is just your basic set. Uh, you know, overall is good. But if you have like a Josh Norman, who's like an 83 speed, it, this is mud. I'm telling, I'm saying now. But if you got him an 83 speed against a John Ross, not a good look. So by speed might be a better way to go. If you're playing against somebody who's got really fast receivers, you might want to set it to to by speed. You know, put your fastest corner on them. Uh, by height, if you're playing against somebody who's like six five and you got Richard Sherman and they're equal in speed. Um, that's a really good way to go. Uh, like I said, I already kind of described what route running is. But uh, this right here, I pretty much will leave on balance a lot of time. Unless I notice I'm getting burnt by something, then I'll switch it up based off of what I'm getting beat by. But uh, most cornerbacks aren't very tall anyway. So by height is not necessarily the best way to go unless you have like a 6'3 Richard Sherman or something like that, like I'm saying. So then you have option defense. Nobody's really running the option this year. So this year, you're really just basing it off of whether you want to play uh, the pitcher, whether you want to play the running back. If somebody is running the option, 
this is a really good way to go. The aggressive is really going after the running back, and the conservatives are really going after the quarterback. Um, if you know somebody's taking the, the quarterback with the ball a lot and running with the quarterback, you can take that away before you even get into the play. So that's a pretty cool uh, option. Then pass rush. Pass rush, this is probably the most useful. Um, if you're if you're up by two touchdowns in the third, set that to aggressive. Turn up the heat. Uh, if you're up you know, 10 points at any point in time, and you know your opponent's going to get pass happy. If you're playing against a guy who hasn't, um, you know, hasn't run the ball all game in the first half, you know, he's set to aggressive, turn it up, turn up the pass rush. You'll see a difference. You'll see uh, your pass rush get after the quarterback quicker and better if you set this to aggressive. Uh, then you have conservative, which is basically outside contain, uh, but they're saying that a con is it will have more time for pocket QBs. Now, like I said, that's important. Uh, conservative pass rush, if somebody runs outside of the pocket, it goes way up. It, it, it skyrockets because once they leave the pocket, that's when the edge containers get off their blocks and get after the quarterback. If you play and you're a mobile quarterback, you'll notice that. So in a lot of ways, hitting conservative will turn up the pass rush depending on who you're playing against. Um, so it's not just simple as aggressive and conservative. No, conservative is aggressive depending on what type of quarterback you're playing. If you're playing against a mobile quarterback, a conservative will get the quarterback more than aggressive. Now, aggressive, um, they say there's a chance of jumping off sides. I do this a lot, and I can't say that I've noticed my defense jumping off sides at all. So that's a bit of a lie. So you can go aggressive pretty much all game if you want to. So then you got the strip ball. Um, I can't say that I really noticed anything uh, as far as the difference. Uh, conservative is lower uh, break tackle chances, so they're basically not going to be um, going for the ball too much, which I think is actually a better way because I think that hit sticking uh, and trying to strip the ball uh, makes a lot of broken tackles. So I almost feel like um, strip ball conservative is probably my favorite one to go. Uh, aggressive means that they're going to try to get more strips and, um, you know, it's a higher chance, but I can't say it really works. I haven't noticed. It also has a, a higher chance of broken, broken tackles, which I don't like at all. I think you need safe, conservative tackling, tackling. Sound fundamentals will win more games in this than aggressive strip ball. I really think that conservative is the best way to go on this. And that kind of lends to the tackling one as well, which is tackling balanced, uh, conservative, which is, you know, like I said, it's safe tackling. I think conservative is really the way to go. Aggressive. Um, we'll, we'll, there's just too many broken tackles, too many missed tackles. The, the hit stick function is not the best right now. So for now, I would say conservative on both. Now on the offensive side of the ball, you have a couple of things like on ball carrier, you have balance, which I typically will go in uh, because conservative, you have a pretty good chance of, uh, you know, decreasing your fumbles, which is probably the best way to go. I hate fumbling, it kills games, uh, but you also have less ability to break tackles. So that's really uh, something you might want to use based off a scenario uh, late in the game you might want to switch to conservative so that you're not giving up um, you know any opportunities for your opponent to get back into the game uh, also aggressive you know, maybe you want to do this early on but it increases your chances of fumbles which is a real deal breaker for me uh, but that's really what you get there I can go either way on this aggressive is a good thing to go just as long as you're running smart enough not taking the necessary hits and typically running to the sideline so that you're not getting pounded inside the uh, you know, if you fumble out of bounds, it's the best way to fumble. So this is not horrible, but um, I would say bounce is probably the way I'd go because uh, one way is just a little bit too too heavy for me. And then uh, blocking, you got balance, which is conservative, decreases chances of holding penalties, but also doesn't block as well, essentially. And then aggressive, which holds blocks longer, but uh, you know, you're just you're, you're probably going to get called for penalties, which is kind of a deal breaker. So here's another one: I might go balanced, uh, depending on the situation. If I really need a play, then that'd be something else. You know, third and five or something, or maybe fourth and inches. I might need to hold a block a little bit longer. Then I. I might want to kick it up to aggressive, uh, but that's another one that if you run that all game, you're gonna penalties are gonna kill your drives. So then you have your deep pass catching, uh, which you know conservative. It says allows for uh, trigger. I'm sorry, always triggers a rack catch attempt, uh, which increases the chance of running after the catch, but it also increases interception chance. Uh, once again, a, kind of a deal breaker. I feel like the defensive versions of these are a lot less uh, problematic if they go the wrong way. And then aggressive is always trigger an aggressive catch but then you don't get a lot of run after catch so that can go either way i think the aggressive catch is kind of important i would definitely use that the most uh because holding on to the ball in traffic is a huge advantage um, and then the last one here you got intermediate pass catching which is kind of the same thing now for conservative possession catch aggressive 
rack um, uh, or aggressive catch um, you know and once again uh, it decreases your chance for running for the catch and increases chance of the ball being knocked out um, if you know which I think is kind of uh, c counterbalancing to what aggressive catching is if it increases the chance of the ball being knocked out uh, maybe that's more than the rack catch because an aggressive catch is supposed to be holding on to the ball so a lot less adjustments on offense uh, but doesn't make them any less severe I would say for me I'm more of a conservative uh, player so I would probably go conservative I'd go balanced on blocking unless the situation dictates I would go aggressive on, ca on deep catching and probably um, conservative on possession catch because like I said to me it's all about controlling the ball and controlling the clock. So that's it. If you guys want to see more tip videos like this, do me a favor, hit the like button. I'll do that. Other than that, thanks for watching. Mad Money Shit Out.